Hey there guitar players, in this video I want to talk to you about multi-finger tapping. Uh, this is a question that's come in to me from a student of mine who's just interested in using more than one finger. This isn't um, necessarily something that I do a lot in my own playing, but uh, I've done some research on the subject and worked on a few things that will hopefully help you out, so let's have, uh, have a look at what we've got. First things first, when you're doing tapping with more than one finger, it's really, really helpful to use some kind of string damper. So this is what's called a fret wrap. And effectively, it's got a, a pad on one end, you put it on the strings to keep the strings quiet, and then you just Velcro on the uh, uh, the, the the other end, just that, that keeps it on. You've probably seen players like Andy James or uh, Guthrie Govan using this kind of thing. There's, there's a number of famous guitar players out there that use this kind of idea. People like Greg Howe used to use a hairband. So what they used to do, well, what Greg used to do was he'd have the hairband off here and then he'd sort of slip it on as he would need it. Because the problem is right now, uh, it doesn't completely mute everything. Uh, I can't play any open chords or anything like that right now. So you want to be able to slip it on and slip it off. But if you know that you're going to be playing like intense metal or something, then you can just leave it on. If you're not using, well, I mean, you might be using the open strings for riffs. I don't know. But... Um, if you've got Floyd Rose or something, you can't slip this on or off, but there we go. So, Anyway, multi-finger tapping. I'm going to do this in a way where what we're doing is we're going to try and keep hold of the plectrum because uh, I'm going to assume that you're going to want to go from the tapping into some other ideas. So, let's do first things first. Let's just take a A minor triad. And tap it with one finger but what we're going to do is we're going to hammer the tenth fret on the b string then we're going to hammer the eighth fret on the high e with the first finger then to the twelfth fret with the fourth finger okay so and then what we're going to do is use the second finger on this hand on the picking hand to the tap the 17 and pull off back down Okay, so that's our sextuplety type feel. Now, if we use also the third finger on this hand, what we're going to be able to do now is go... So what I'm doing here is I'm tapping that 15, then I'm tapping the 17 with the third finger. There's a couple of different ways you can look at this. When I'm doing this with this kind of fingering, I find it very hard to go and like pull off upwards. So I'm pulling off away from the strings. Like that, so. That's quite a nice bubbly sort of sound. Now, I if you want to get a much bigger stretch on this, you can actually use your fourth finger. So we could do something like this now. So my fourth finger on this hand is very, very weak because I don't use it for this technique at all, but it's something you can experiment with. Now, to be able to get your hand in the right position, what I do with this, in, uh, I keep hold of the plectrum, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it up the side of that finger. So now I can do this kind of motion. So the plectrum is, Therefore, my picking, and then slide it up the side of that finger like this to go away to get in for the tapping stuff. So what I'm doing here, I'm still doing that 15, 17, but then on the second rotation, I'm gonna to go to the 19th fret on the high E. So. finger thing is really really difficult you might be able to try and do it with the third finger if you want to or if I bring the fourth finger in again let's try that needs a lot of practice for me but um, 
If you take uh, take some inspiration from this, you might be able to work that up to some sort of mind-boggling speed. So that's one way of introducing this. Um, another way of doing this would be pentatonics. So for example, um, you can play A minor pentatonic in the fret in hand and then do E minor pentatonic in the picking hand. So A minor pentatonic is going to be obviously 5-8, 5-7, 5-7, 5-7, 5-8, 5-8. And then your E minor pentatonic would be 12-15, 12-14, 12-14, 12-15. Twelve fifteen. So when you do this, you could just do. You know, something like that. Uh, what would I exit with? with I don't know. Something like that, I don't know. You know, so like them sorts of things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you could that sort of thing works if you do um, that's quite nice. So I'm doing the eight first. So I'm doing eight, twelve, fifteen, twelve, eight, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. other ways of making these things musical check out a guy called Joel Hoekstra he's really really good at all of this stuff um, what's another thing that we could do also let's uh, keep with that E minor pentatonic theme but what I want to do now is play E minor pentatonic in the fret hand like this E15 B12 and then so we're effectively playing E minor pentatonic in that kind of format that sort of pattern now what I would do is I would tap position three of that in the same way, like this. So now you can do... Um, so tapping in the right hand and then in the left hand or picking and fretting hand, whichever way you want to look at it. Then go to each string. Doing the same thing. You can even come back on yourself with that sort of thing like this. As I say, they're not really the sorts of things that I do with my music. Then it's not something that I. I mean, there's there's some things in there that I looked at because people that I like, players that I listen to, did a few of those sorts of things. But for me, I was like, well, they, I, I can't find a way of making that all musical. So I stopped working on anything like that absolutely years ago. But hopefully, in those kind of ideas, there is. Um, some food for thought for you that will help propel you in a way that will get you doing these things and, and there we go okay guys if you want to ask me questions like this and you want to see what my opinion is on them and everything consider becoming a member at the cutting edge guitar community which you can uh, get a link to in the description below and uh, i'll be very happy to answer your questions here on youtube um, if you've enjoyed the video, do give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you in another video sometime soon. Take care.